Hello everyone, today we're going to look at expanding brackets in a way where we make it unthinkable that we, we make an error. It's not, at the end of the day, the, the main thing that the examiners are going to be looking to assess you on. They, they expect that you can expand brackets. Perhaps you'll be doing it sort of during a, long, a longer question and you'll just be expected to be able to do it. You're not going to get given lots and lots of marks, marks for doing so, but generally it is a big source of errors, in particular around negative signs. So I want us to develop self-strategies, self-check strategies that pretty much eliminate the chance that we're going to make an error. So I've got, I've got three fairly difficult questions today that are going to test how we work, um, how we work accurately. What I suggest you do is pause the video so that you can have a go at the question yourself first. So let's look at the first question. So what we're required to do is to go through this first bracket and times each of these terms by 6. So we've got an x to the 4, but we are required to times by 6. So that's easy enough. And now we've got 3x squared and we times by 6. So we may as well just work out 3 times 6, now times by a further x squared. Both signs were positive, so that's a positive there. Next, we've got 3x times 6, but let's just do 3 times 6 and times by the x. And now separately, think about your signs. You have a negative and we have a positive. The signs are different. So now I'm going to commit to the negative. Finally, we've got 6 times 1, which is obviously 6. But then reflect on what the sign is. The signs are, are different. One is a negative, one is a positive. So now commit to the negative. So you can think about the sign separately. In this one, I would expect, if I was marking some papers, I'd expect quite a lot of students to... Uh, drop drop marks based on the negative signs here. You want to make that unthinkable, a thing of the past. Just do 3 times 4. Now think the signs are separate, so you can now commit to the negative. Just do 3 lots of 5x. Make sure you get that right. Now think that they're both negatives, so we can now go for a positive. So you don't have to do both things at once. You can do it separately. Finally, three lots of x cubed. And think about the signs. They were different. So now we just collect up. Be systematic. We go for the highest power. Look down the line. Are there any other x to the fours? Well, no, there isn't. So we're just going to write that. Uh, next, we should check for x cubes. There's one term there. So we're going to write that next. X squared terms, well, there's just one of them as well. Normal X terms, well, we have a negative 18X, but a plus 15. So again here, make sure you get the signs correct. Um, if you begin here and then go up by 15, it lands you on negative 3. And then the normal numbers we've just got here, the net effect is that we have negative 18. So we're developing your strategies, particularly around the negative signs, and make sure that you don't make any errors. Let's look at B. It's a lot of work to do here, so we've got to sort of keep that discipline throughout keep those self-check strategies going to make sure we don't make any errors. So I may as well just do 2 times 7, commit that to the page, then think I'm going to times by x squared as well. Next we have the 2x squared, but we need to times by a further x, so let's move that up a notch, and then separately think the signs are different 
So I commit now to the negative. Moving on to the next one, we're going to do 2 times 7. So I get that on the page. We're then thinking if there's an x squared and an x squared, so that moves up to x to the 4. And very separately now we commit to the positive, noting they were both positives there. So that's that one done. Moving on to here, just do 6 times 3, 18. Then we times by a further x, and that will be a positive. Then we're going to do, we can put the 6 on the page. We've got an x, but we're going to times by a further x cubed, bringing us up to an x to the 4 term. And now, very much separately, we're looking at the signs. They're different, so we now choose the negative. Moving on to the last bracket, we've got 4 times 1, so that's going to be a plus 4. Then 4 times 5, so 20, and we're times it by an x as well, so 20x. The signs are different, so now choose the negative. And then we've got 4 times x squared, so 4x squared. Let me think about the signs. There are different signs, so a negative. I'm pretty confident that I was accurate there because I kept breaking each each uh, multiplication into perhaps doing the numbers separately, the letters separately, and the sign very much separately to ensure I don't make any errors. Now collecting our terms together, we have an x to the 4 term there and an x to the 4 term there. So if you start on 14 and go down by 6, you will end up at the number 8, so that's 8x to the 4. Let's look for the cubic terms next. We have one there, and scanning along the line, I can't see any others, but that's fine, I'll just put that. Let's look at the squared terms next. We've got one there, and we've got one at the end, look. So 14 minus 4, that means we've got 10 overall. Let's look at the normal x terms. We've just got a plus 18 and a minus 20. The net effect being that we've got negative 2x. Normal numbers then, there's actually only one normal number. So that's fine, that's a plus 4. Okay, quite a difficult question here. A lot of expanding out, so we're going to need to be really, really careful. So what we've got to do here is if we take the x cubed, we've got to times x cubed by that and that. Then we're going to move on to here, and we're going to make sure we times that by x and by 2. Then we move on to the negative 7. We make sure we times that by x and by 2. So we're going to get uh, 6 terms there. We're going to need to be very careful when we get to here because we'll, we're going to know it's a minus sign there. So we're going to have to expand all of that out. And we're actually going to get nine terms from that. But then whatever the answer to that is, we're going to have to times each of those nine terms by minus one. So what we want to do is just work that out, all those nine terms, we get all the answers, and we're just going to leave a minus sign on the outside. This is probably the most difficult aspect of the problem, that we've got that minus sign there. It's going to be minusing the whole lot here. So I'll show you how to cope with that in a way where you're not going to make any errors. But let's start expanding out the left-hand side. So we begin on x cubed, and we times up by a further x. So we end up on x to the 4. Next, we've got x cubed, and we just times by 2. So that's that. That's that done. And now we move along. We've done our job there. That's that done. We're going to move to here by times in like this. So we've got 2x squared. Move up a notch, though, and you're on x cubed. Separately think about the signs. One was positive, one was negative. Stay where you are. You're still on the 2x squared, but we're going to double that. So we've got 4x squared. Then the signs were different, so we commit there. Four terms done. 
um, two to go. We've done those ones. Now we've got seven times x. Think about the sign. It will be a negative. Then seven times two. Think about the sign. It's a negative. I can see I'm running out of room here. I think I'm going to just do this part on the next line. I'm going to commit to a negative and I'm going to open up a massive a lot of brackets because I'm going to have nine terms in here which will be when I expand this out and the reason I'm doing this I'm setting up this little template that's my way to avoid any errors because all of my nine terms will need to be minus. So 2x squared, that's times by a further x squared. So we've got 2x to the 5. We've got 2x squared. So let's be careful here. You may as well just do 2 times 7. Get that on the page. And then you've got x cubed times by a further x is x to the 4. Okay, they were both positives, so that's fine. Remember, I don't have to worry about that because I've got the minus there, I can worry about that on the next line. Stay where you are, we've still got to do 2x cubed times by 3. So that'll be 6 lots of x cubed. And the signs were different, a positive and a negative. So we've got a negative there. So that's that one done. We're now going to move to along to the x. I'm actually just going to, it's a plus x, so I'm just going to go through here and times everything by x. So plus x cubed, plus 7x squared, and minus 3x. I, th I did that quite quickly because I was just times it by plus x. In fact, I'm going to do this one quite quickly as well because we're just times everything by minus 1. So I can go through here and just change the sign of everything. So minus x squared, minus 7x, plus 3. We're doing the same thing every time. So next I'm going to just tidy up here, simplify all of this down, and also I'm going to simplify all of this down in the, in the brackets here. So looking here, I've just got 1x to the 4 term. I have, uh, this is quite nice, I've got 2x cubed terms which cancel out. And then I've got 1x squared term and a single x term. And finally, in terms of normal numbers, I just have the negative 14. But I'm still going to maintain this bracket with the minus on the outside uh, because you should always do your tidying first before trying to expand that bracket out. Let's tidy up. So we've got a x to the 5 term. Um, we have one term involving a power 4. Let's look at the cubic type terms. We've got just these two here. So if you're on negative 6 and you go up by 1, that lands you on negative 5. The x squared term, just scanning across, making sure we don't miss anything. So we've got this one and this one. So 7 minus 1. Now the normal x type terms, we've just got this one and this one. The net effect is we've got negative 10x. And the bracket is not shouldn't be closed there. Let me just get rid of that. Let's look at for the normal numbers. We've just got that plus 3, so that will go there. Now we close the brackets. So throughout, I've not taken on this minus sign yet, which is probably the most difficult aspect of the problem. I am now going to do that on the next line um, here. So what I can do is just read the line as 1. And the highest power there is an x to a 5, which is actually an implied negative because 
if we expand this out, this returns it by minus one there, it will end up being a negative. Next, I'm going to read it as one. I'm going to look for all the x to the four terms. We've got the one here, and we've got the one here. But remember, this one will in fact be a minus term. So we've got a plus one and what will be a minus 14. So 1 minus 14, that brings us to minus 13. So I, I'm kind of skipping a step here. I suppose I could take an extra line and just change the sign from each of them. But I, I think that we can just gather our terms up and times everything there by minus 1 in one go. The only x cubed term is here which will be end up being a positive once that bracket is expanded out. Gathering up our x squared terms, we've got the that term there, which will be a negative once we've expanded out. And we've got the negative 4 here. So that's a net effect of negative 10x squared. The normal x terms, we've got that which will be a positive 10x and this here, so that's a positive 10x minus 7, 3x. And in terms of normal numbers, we have a negative 14 and the negative 3, so we've got negative 17 there. So what I suggest you do now is perhaps find some questions uh, to do yourself and to, and to practice them. Um, we met expanding brackets probably, you know, probably in year seven, and we, we've done them ever since. It's not the main emphasis in terms of assessment for A level, but you will often find yourself expanding brackets during larger questions. And I really want you to just completely eliminate any errors that could come from negative signs in particular.